Hey, I'm troops. It's a little Tanira cap. Had a retina once. Unreal. It's a little Tanira again with another video, and this time we're going to look at how to play Ying. Now, just before we get into how to play Ying, yes, I am wearing a Bengals jersey. The Bengals play the Bills tomorrow in the divisional playoff round. Please manifest all the good luck you can for me. Thank you. Now, back to the subject. There's nothing I hate more in Tom Clancy's Rainbow Six Siege than this noise. That's when you're about to know you're going to be hit by a Candela, and all of a sudden everything goes white. The next thing you know, you're back on cams for your team. It's a horrible feeling because there's no escaping the Candela if he's anywhere near you. So in this video, we'll go through how to play Ying, the basics of Ying, some good examples of where to use Ying, and obviously go through a loadout to begin with as well. So we'll start with a quick gameplay example of where I used Ying in a quick play match where I can show you how I think she's used well, and then we'll jump into it. But other than that, I think that's enough waffling for now. Let's get stuck into it. Okay, so we're drone in sight. Don't look at this spray. It was really difficult. Okay, Jaeger's head was only peeking up a tiny bit, so ignore that. I hear the sound underneath me now. It sounds like they're in the middle of the floor below. So I put the candela on the floor to flash the entire floor because it goes out in a star pattern, which we'll find out later. That'll then allow me to drop because I'll have to take cover from the candela. Then see them just go through that rotate. I felt like I could have killed them there, but that's on my, that's me. I'm currently pinged by the alibi. As you can see, the ADS catches the candela. It goes off in there now, and now we push. Again, it's not the cleanest kill here, because I thought they were on the right, and then they missed, and they came back here, and we got it done. So you can see how strong the Candela is there. Obviously, we've got a good bit of the Siege community in the old chat, but ignore that. But anyway, that's a good the Candela is. Okay, so let's get started with Ying's loadout then, and Ying has access to the T95 and the 612. I'll be honest with you, I've never, ever used this shotgun in Siege. I've never ever used it, not for one round. I've no idea what it feels like. I've no idea if it's any good. I just do know that the T95 is a really, really, really solid um, assault rifle slash LMG. It's assault rifle with a, with a drum mag on, but it's essentially an LMG. It's got a capacity of 80, a damage of 46. Fire rate's not too bad. The recoil's pretty much non-existent. It's a really, really good gun. I think it's very underutilized and very underrated. Uh, you don't get much of a choice when it comes to the sidearm using the Q929. And on the secondary gadget, you can either take smokes or hard breach charges. Now, the smokes are good for um, burning ADS or one mine magnets before you throw candelas through windows or for aiding with the push as well. Like if you can be in smoke and you can flash them, obviously it's a horrible situation to be in as a defender. Um, the tin can opener slash hard breach charges are going to be good for some sites. But again, when it comes to secondary gadgets, like we always say, completely site dependent. It depends what job you're trying to do that round. For me as standard, I go with the T95, the Q929 and smokes. So starting with the basics then, Ying gets access to this thing. This is a Candela, essentially a flashbang on steroids. And becoming useful with the Candela and getting the most out of it is about learning how it works in terms of the fuse. So if I press and hold the gadget button again, you'll see the three dots on the crosshair, one top left, bottom right, and bottom left. And um, you'll see they're initially sort of grayed out. And then as you hold down the, the Candela button, the gadget button, you'll see that they light up. So let's try again. And that is the fuse of the Candela, okay? So that's how long it takes for this Candela to go off. If you roll it across the floor, or if you press and hold it, it still takes the same amount of time to go off. Now, there are different ways that it works once you've charged it up. So what we do by holding this is essentially like cooking a grenade. Now, it'll never go off in your hand. You can hold this for as long as you need to, um, unlike a grenade, which obviously will blow your face off if you hold on to it for too long. The Candela will never go off until you release the gadget button or swap back to a weapon. So... Looking at that fuse, and if we don't, if we, for the start at the beginning, if we don't charge it up, I mean, this isn't going to be the easiest thing to explain here, so I hope I do, I hope they do this justice. If you don't charge the candela up, and you just roll it across the floor, or you throw it, it'll hit the floor, and it will carry on rolling in the direction that you threw it before it hits an object. Once it hits the object, it doesn't bounce off like Sensi's gadget does. It will roll along the wall, and that's worth knowing because you can throw it into some really interesting spaces by knowing that it won't bounce off a wall, it will roll along the wall. So, again, if we don't charge it up and we just roll it, hits the wall, rolls along the wall. And it rolled along the wall for the same amount of time from when we threw it, as long as it takes for that charge to get, for that fuse to sort of charge up there. It's exactly the same. Now, if you charge it up all the way, and you don't just throw it straight away, so you charge it up like this, and then you throw it, it will go off once it hits the floor immediately, so there's no rolling. If you throw it at a wall, it'll bounce off the wall and will go off when it hits the floor. So let's just throw it at a wall to begin with, and you'll see that it goes off immediately on hitting the floor. 
and sticks, it doesn't roll anywhere. And if you charge it up and don't throw it at a wall, if you just throw it at the floor straight away, it sticks to where it was. Now, that's good to know because if you, for example, let's just use this, uh, let's just use this door here, okay? You know there's an enemy, you've drowned him out and he's holding this angle here, for example. If you roll the candela, it's going to take this amount of time. One, two, three. They're slightly shorter than the seconds, but it's going to take that amount of time for the candela to go off. And if you roll it through here, you know it's going to sort of go off in maybe this area, which might be too far away to flash the guy that's here. However, you know that you can throw it on the floor and it can go off immediately. You can land it right there just by charging it up. It'll go off as soon as it hits the floor. And the guy that's stood here holding this angle isn't going to see for about three weeks. So use the fuse to your advantage. Like Use the charge up time to your advantage. If you know that you need to roll it out of this door and you want it to land there, for example, roll it out the door. I've got no more candelas left. Roll it out the door. Or charge it up and have it land where you need it. That's the, the best advice I can give when it comes to the timing and the charging. So we've talked about if you don't charge it up at all, it'll roll until it hits a wall or an object and, and stick to that. And we talked about if you fully charge it, it'll just stick to the floor immediately once it hits the floor. And you've got everything in between as well. So you can part cook it or part charge it and it'll only roll for a little while. Or you obviously you can not charge it all, you can fully cook it up to you. Now the other way of using Ying, and I didn't know this at all for a long time whilst I was playing Siege, is you can place candelas on soft walls or soft hatches or castle barricades. So if you approach the wall, you'll see that Ying's candela in a hand, the three dots are on the outside of that circle on the crosshair. As you approach the wall, you'll see them go to the middle and you see Ying's hand change position as well. That means that you can now place the candela on the wall and it will go through the wall a little bit like a fuse charge would. So if I make a hole here for us to look through, as you put the, it's exactly the same with the candela on the wall, by the way. If you put it on the wall straight away, it takes the charged amount of time to go off before it goes off, giving you a chance to say, like, you could put it on this wall and then run around this door for, I know there's no door here, but let's just pretend there was a door here. You could put it on this wall and then run through here and it will go off a little bit later, or you can fully charge it so it goes off as soon as you put it on the wall. So let's just give you an example and we'll see through this hole. So you can see that the, the flashes get sort of, uh, excuse me, I've got a cough there. The fla I'm keeping that in, honestly, the amount of times I cough, if I, if I started the clip again every time I cough, we'd never get anything done. So the flashes go out in a pattern, as it's much like a fuse charge once it's on the wall, and if you don't charge it up, it takes that little bit of time before it goes off. Now, the difference is, compared to a fuse charge, when a candela goes off, and I'll try and draw this on the... If this if this is the candela here, right? Oh, no, we can't use that surface. Let's use a wall. So, pretend this is the floor, okay? We're looking down on the floor here. If this is the candela in a circle there, on the floor, a fuse charge goes off in a line, as we spoke about on the fuse video. Go and watch the fuse video if you haven't already. The middle of the candela is there, okay? The candela goes off in a star pattern. So, it goes off in one here, one here, one here, one here one here and one here now it goes off in a pattern and there's six um it goes off like a sort of star shape that isn't the best star but i hope that gives you an idea and then one goes off in the middle as well so if i throw this on the floor in front of me you'll see it goes off and essentially like a, a star pattern like a sort of circular star pattern can you see that it was sort of all around the all around itself type thing i hope that i mean that doesn't really make much sense but i think that's a better example there you'll see that it's um, like, if that's the candela there, it goes off in it. A pattern along those lines, and then one in the middle. So it doesn't go off in a line. If you throw it into the room, it's going to bounce off in all directions. Now, the range of the candela as well, there's no way of actually testing this. But I have tried to test this, and it never gives me an accurate result, but the most I've been flashed is standing 10 meters away. So bear in mind, that's 10 meters now. I got flashed by a candela whilst I was 10 meters away, but the results were inconsistent for me. I think the environment plays a lot into it as well. You know, if you're just sort of, say the candela goes off there and you're looking like this, you'll only get partially flashed. A, a lot goes down to the environment, but the range of it is much further than a standard flashbang. And, uh, and yeah, that's the pattern that it goes off in. So whilst we're stood here next to a drone hole, remember that candelas can go off in drone holes as well. And this is actually a really good example here. I mean, there's probably going to be people behind the throne, but if you've opened these walls, you'd hope that there's no one behind the throne or you can at least clear behind the throne. And if someone's playing like around this area here, you can use this drone all as ying to great effect. So let's just give you an example. What you don't want to do is charge it up here. Obviously, you just want to roll it through the drone hole and then you can push around. So that's rolling through. 
you can see it goes off right in the middle of that room and obviously you'd push around just as it goes off. So you can use drone halls to your advantage as well. They also roll under barricades, so if it's always barricaded, you'd be able to throw a candala under here. I don't have any left, but yeah, drone holes and barricades, it can roll under. Now, when it comes to counters to Ying, there is a really obvious one, which, I mean, if you ever do this, then please show me because it's nearly impossible, but you can shoot the candala before it goes off. And I'll try and use this wall so it makes it easier for me, but roll it across the floor. You can shoot the candala before it goes off. If you manage to do that in a game, as a candala comes rolling by and you manage to shoot it, let me know and I will... I don't know what I'll do. I'll give you a code to a weapon skin or something. If you can get a clip of that happening in-game, I'll give you a code to, like, the Elevate AK weapon skin. Or I might even have some charm codes knocking about from the Yonkaping Major still, but... Uh, Yonkaping even, sorry. I'm not very Swedish. But if you've got a clip of doing that, I need you to send it me in. Um... So that is one counter. Now, the other counter, and now I haven't got um, anyone to demonstrate this here, but I'm just going to talk about it very quickly, is Jaeger and Wamai. Now, Jaeger will snag a full candala out of the air, like his ADS will shoot a full candala out the air, but Jaeger also interacts slightly differently with it as well. So the ADS will snag a full candala. Wamai's magnet, if there was a, a Wamai magnet up here, you throw the candala in this area, the candala gets dragged up to the magnet, and then it will go off, like, you know, if frag grenades get dragged into magnets and then go off. Candala is exactly the same. Jaeger is slightly different. So Jaeger, as I keep saying, will be able to take out a full Candala in the air. But if the Candala goes out outside of the ADS's range, and one of the flashes from the Candala bounces in the ADS range, the ADS will still snag that small flashbang from the Candala. So it will grab the whole thing, or if that's slightly out of range, it will grab one of the flashes that jumps out of the Candala as well. So it does interact slightly differently to Wumai. So along with being able to shoot the candala, if you've got an impact grenade or a C4, I mean, you're going to really struggle to get a C4 off. But you can impact them as well. Explosive, destroy them. And whilst we're talking about counters, don't forget about the main one, which is, of course, Warden. Warden can activate his glasses and the flashes remain... He remains unaffected by the flashes as long as he's stood still. Because the, war, the Warden glasses, as you probably know, as you're moving... The, the power of the glasses, like the ability to resist uh, uh, smokes and flashes. I nearly said folks and slashes then. <laughs> the ability to um, be immune from smokes and flashes is uh, like depletes as you move with Warden. You need to stand still to get the best use of his gadgets. So if you see a Warden, you're not going to be able to, uh, to flash him out particularly well unless that Warden doesn't use his glasses, which would be silly really because that's the only reason you'd play Warden. But yeah, they're the main counters. So shooting the Candala, using explosives on the Candala, Jaeger, Wamai, and Warden. So let's get into some real life examples then, and I've brought Ying shotgun here just so I can open the wall to pretend that it's been breached. You know at the start of the video when I said I've never used Ying shotgun? This is the first time I've ever shot a, a round with Ying shotgun. It's only got six bullets. Like, I, I really I really don't like shotguns, but it just looks weird and feels weird. It's the first time I've ever used it, but yeah, don't use the shotgun unless you really like it. I'm only using it just to open the wall. So real life examples on when you can use this in game then. This is a classic. You can all, I mean, we talked about this on the sense video, but being able to get things through to, to block off top red, exactly the same works with Ying. So you can throw the candela through the drone hole, wait for it to go off top red and push. And anyone that's playing around here, you know, anyone that's in this rotator, if someone's playing behind a shield here, they're not going to be able to see a thing for a little while. And, uh... One of the things I like to do here, by the way, is obviously you wouldn't have the shotgun, you'd have Ying's assault rifle, but you can make a hole by just shooting out the, the wall, and then you can flash over walls. That's going to go off right in the middle of cache. Anyone in cache isn't going to be able to see a thing. So yeah, don't forget you can, if you didn't have, if you had the assault rifle, and I mean, how long does it take to do that with a pistol? That just takes so long to do that. Oh my god. I mean, I'm just proving a point here. Wow, that takes a long ass time. Anyway, so yeah, don't forget you can make holes in walls and throw it over. But yeah, a really good example here on Clubhouse. If you want to push the breaches, Ying, make sure the breach is open, of course. Make sure rafters is clear. And yeah, chuck it through the drone hole and run round. Don't forget as well from here, you can't. There'll be a, a line of sight along here usually, or a rotate. Chuck one over there as well if you want to push rafters. But yeah, that example there using the drone hole to push top red is a really good example, I think. Just like that. So another really useful area for Ying. Again, we're going to be using a drone hole. It's here on bathroom. You do have to shoot the suitcase out before you can do this. Otherwise, it's not going to roll through. Yeah, you've got bathroom window open. You know there's a player in here. A lot of players like to play sort of here, holding the bathroom tightly. This single wall in the middle will be reinforced. Or you can even get up on here and hold an angle from here. Tight on the window. But yeah, like especially around this area on Astro, people like holding bathroom. Again, just roll your... Uh, 
you flashbang or your candela, sorry, through the drone hole and then push the window. I charge up slightly more this time. Get that through there. Jump in. And see, using the charge, we made sure if we hadn't charged that up, that had a roll to like over here. Um, but because we charged it up, it went off here. So you charge it through the drone hole and jump through as you go. There's a ton of examples where you can do that using drone holes and, and especially barricades as well. What I like to do is if I let me just go and find a barricade downstairs quickly on a door and I can show you another example. Um, let's go to this one here in art. So is punch the barricade twice. Ideally, so you can't get a headshot like high up and then roll the candela underneath. And as it's about to go off, you push and push the last one and then push out. It works really well on doors that have been barricaded. But yeah, another example up on bathroom there where you can use the drone all to your advantage. So there we have it. It's out to play Ying, in my opinion. A massively underrated operator, I think. The gun is unbelievable. It's got a high capacity, decent damage. The utility is good in almost all situations if you use it right. Really good operator to learn how to use. If you've got this far in the video, just a massive thank you for watching. This channel is now just over 12 months old. And in 12 months, we've done a lot of good things. So if you're part of that, which you will be if you're this far into the video, then a massive thank you. But other than that, I'll see you on the next one. Cheers!